Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I came across something very interesting about an article a troll wrote. And this troll, uh, well, I don't know if this troll even had the nerve to leave their name because they knew they were going to get a lot of backlash. But this is y-jesus.com is the name of the blog or whatever it is. This person has the gall to say that scholars, which is, by the way, I don't care what scholars say. Because as, as you all know, that the history of mankind is a lie, right? So why would I trust what a scholar says? Why? I only trust Jesus Christ and his word, okay? Now, this person wrote an article said have you ever met a man who is the ten who is the center of attention wherever he goes some mysterious and identifiable character sets him apart from the other man well that's the way it was 2,000 years ago with Jesus Christ but it wasn't merely Jesus Christ's personality that captivated those who heard him those who witnessed his words and life tell us that something about Jesus of Nazareth was different from all other men and then this person has the nerve to say Jesus only credentials was himself let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Whoever you are, Jesus Christ doesn't need to write a book. He doesn't need man's approval because Jesus Christ is God and these stupid scholars are wrong on so many levels. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just literally full of anger, righteous anger right now. This person got the nerve to say Jesus Christ never wrote a book, commanded an army, held the postal service or owned property. Let me say something. Jesus Christ owns everything up in here because Jesus Christ created everything. So that, that debunks what this person said about Jesus Christ not owning property. Jesus Christ never hold a political office. Jesus Christ is the judge of judges. He is the God of gods, king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the true living God. So that debunks that too. And then this person got the nerve to say, that Jesus Christ's only credentials was himself. Jesus Christ is God and Lord of all. And he could show mercy to whom he chooses to serve mercy to. The Lord ain't going to listen to some fool that wrote this article. For real. So I'm going to go into the word of God. Which is what we should be looking at. For real. Okay. I'm going to go into the word of God. And the word of God. Is going to say. It's going to back up. That Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh. Jesus Christ is God. He is the son of God. He is the father. That's who Jesus Christ is. So I'm going to pull up a scripture. Okay. There's many scriptures to back this up. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Let's go on. Bible verses about Jesus Christ and the KJV. I don't use any other satanic version. And the word was made flesh. So the word, and if you look at John chapter 1, the word was God and the word became flesh. Let me, let me say this. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus Christ. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, the begotten Son of Jesus, the begotten of the Father, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son. That's saying that Jesus Christ is God. He's one with the Father, full of grace and truth. For unto us a child is born, unto a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. That means Jesus Christ is the governor of governors, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Talking about Jesus Christ. That's another scripture, backing that up. Here's another scripture. In the beginning, John chapter 1, John chapter 1, I told y'all that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God, and that Word became flesh. Amen? And Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. So this troll. Okay y'all ladies and gentlemen. I, I was going to take a nap because I was so tired from work. But I had to stop and talk on this. This troll is using unreliable scholars. Which is manly, manly knowledge. Demonic knowledge. To say Jesus Christ is not God. So. Let's see, this person said his only credentials was himself. No, Jesus Christ is God. That's the credential enough. And the word of God supports the fact that Jesus Christ is God. 
what else does this person say? Jesus Christ also attracted many crowds. I'm, a human being can't do that. Let's, a human being cannot do that. Jesus Christ didn't need to do occult magic or any type of enchantments. Just Jesus Christ being himself attracted crowds. If a human being wants to attract crowds, they, they got to put them under a spell or something. Jesus Christ ain't about that. Jesus Christ astounded and continues to amaze the, the body of Christ. Okay, and what else did this person say? Some believe he was merely a great moral teacher. Others believe after carefully examining Jesus Christ's life and words, um, Jesus really was. Some believers say he was merely... Oh, let me go down here. After carefully examine Jesus Christ and words, former Cambridge professional skeptic C. Lewis came to a startling conclusion about him that altered the course of his life. So who is the real Jesus? Many will answer that Jesus was a great moral teacher as we take a deeper look at a controversial issue. So let's go to page two. I'm not going to go through this whole entire article. But they're trying to discredit Jesus Christ as being God. Okay? With this unreliable article. Okay? Jesus Christ said he's one with the Father and the Father is in him. He was sent by the Father. That his disciples couldn't go where he was coming because Jesus Christ was prophesying his own death. Meaning that he was going to die for the sins of mankind. Jesus Christ is a living God and he's immortal. He never died. He, 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 gave, him, he gave himself as a sacrificial lamb for mankind so mankind wouldn't have to be condemned for sins. So they could have a chance at, at, at repentance. And you got some person here trying to say that Jesus Christ is not God. Jesus Christ is God. Okay, I showed you scriptures backing that up. There's more than one scripture. It's not just that. There's more than one scripture that backs up that Jesus Christ is God. That's why John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4 says, Believe not every spirit. Try the spirits if they are of God or not. And that's what I'm doing. I just came across this scripture. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. I just bumped into the scripture. The Lord's speaking to me right now, telling you people that believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into this world. Scholars like this. Hear ye know, or hereby know, I'm sorry, ye the Spirit of God, if you know the Spirit of God, Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So if you believe that Jesus Christ is God, that he manifested in the flesh to save mankind from their sins, you are of God. The truth of the Father is in you. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. You have the love of God in you because you have the truth of God in you. And it says right here, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is and this is that spirit of Antichrist where ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. Basically telling you, God's prophesying that many people will claim that Jesus Christ is not God like these scholars do. It's an Antichrist spirit. And God only hears and knows his sheep. His sheep knows his voice. God only hears the, the, the voice of of the righteous we are of God he that knoweth God heareth us he that is not of God heareth not us hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error the spirit of truth is God the spirit of error is Satan and that's what these so called scholars they, they are led by Satan because Jesus Christ is God I've seen him for myself in person physically I know Jesus Christ is God and I have both faith in my father. And I've seen him work miracles. Ladies and gentlemen. Do not rely 
on these Satanists that claim that they're scholars. Don't let them deter your walk with the Father or, or risk your crown of life. Always hold on to the faith that you have in the Lord. Because with faith you can move mountains. You can move seas. You can move planets. Anything is possible with God. If you let him use you in a mighty way. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ perfected his, his, his works. He's perfect. Jesus Christ works. His judgments and statutes are perfect. God showed mankind his works. So perfect and flawless. When he was among us living. The first time God came was to serve mankind and save them from their sins. The next time he comes, ladies and gentlemen, it's not to serve mankind. It's to wage a righteous war. I told you that. So please, don't fall for this deception that Jesus Christ is not God. That's what Muslims believe, Hindus believe. Don't. Because if you are professing that Jesus Christ is not God, and I'm not saying all of you, you are no better than a Muslim or a Hindu or a Catholic or a Protestant or a Satanist for that matter. Please, seek Jesus on this message that I delivered to you today. That Jesus Christ is the living God and he is the only true God. And he is coming soon and you don't want to fall into any kind of deception.